On the night of October 5th, 1948, a young eight-year-old was put to bed by his mother. His mother and his two brothers were still dealing with his father's death at the hands of the Nazis thousands of kilometers away. Life in the Turkmen SSR during the 1940s was difficult, but for a young Sapr Murat Niyazov, life was about to get much more difficult. This is the story of how a young and innocent boy would be slowly corrupted by power, tragedy, and lies to become the 21st century's most insane dictator. This is the story of Sabr Murat Niyazov, better known as Turkmenbashi, and how he became the first leader of Turkmenistan, and arguably one of the craziest dictators in the modern era. Sapr Murat Niyazov was born in the village town Gupchak, right outside of the capital of Turkmenistan, Ashgabat, on February 19, 1940. Prior to the 1940s, Niyazov's family lived relatively well for the time. His father, Atamurat Niyazov, was a school teacher, financial advisor, and public official who learned four languages over his life, including Turkmen, Russian, Arabic, and Latin. In 1937, he married his wife, Gurban Sultan Niyazova, with whom he'd have three sons, one of which would become the future leader of Turkmenistan. However, only Sapr Murat, who was the second of three sons between Atta Murat and Gurban Sultan, would survive the decade. In 1941, Atta Murat volunteered to serve in the Second World War after the Soviet Union was invaded by the Nazi regime. Within a year, Atta Murat was sent to serve and killed on the front line. Sapr Murat's family suffered greatly under the economic downturn of the 1940s, especially after the war. In 1948, when Sapr Murat was eight years old, Turkmenistan would face the worst natural disaster in its history. On October 5, 1948, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck the capital of the Turkmen SSR. Within a few hours, 10% of the ethnic Turkmen population were dead, including Sapr Murat's two brothers and his mother who would die in the same house that Sapr Murat came out of with only minor injuries. Within a few days, Niyazov was sent to an orphanage where he would spend the next decade until he graduated from school. Niyazov has commented multiple times about this time in his life, saying that they've put a new meaning to the name transformative years. At the same time, he has said that his troubled youth had made it easier and comforting to pledge loyalty to the Communist Party while, coinciding with that, pushed him to be an incredibly hard-working person. Indeed, after finishing school in 1959, he worked as an instructor at the local trade union, and, to improve his skills, he moved to St. Petersburg in 1965 to study electrical engineering. Within two years, he would finish his schooling while also becoming very involved in the Communist Party activities. However, that is not the only new family he would find in St. Petersburg. Niyazov also met his first wife there while studying, a Russian woman named Musa. In 1967, Musa had his first son and only son, and two years later she gave birth to his first and only daughter. Niyazov has stated that this too was a very formative period in his life, noting that this was the first time since 1948 that he felt like he had a family. The importance of unquestioned and full loyalty to the state along with keeping family as a pillar of one's own self, would become the major two components in his rule later in his life. Over the next two decades, Niyazov quickly rose the ranks of the Communist Party. He became notorious for being an efficient administrator in energy and industry. During the late 1960s, he was a lead engineer at the Buzmein power plant, which powered a quarter of Ashgabat. During the 1970s, he held the position of the head of section of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, allowing him to see the inner workings of the Communist Party. Finally, in 1980, he became the first secretary of the Ashgabat City Committee, essentially making him mayor of the capital of the Turkmen SSR. This was also an extremely influential time in Niyazov's life, as his time as an effective apparatchik would teach him multiple skills that was characteristic of his time as the leader of Turkmenistan, most importantly of which was his ability to build alliances and sideline or even humiliate opposition. Niyazov gained a reputation in Moscow for these unique abilities, and so, in 1985, when Mikhail Gorbachev became General Secretary of the USSR, 
Gorbachev saw Niazov as a great opportunity to flush out political opponents in the Turkmen SSR and later replace them with Gorbachev loyalists. Thus, in 1985, Niazov became the first secretary of the Communist Party of the Turkmen SSR, using his tactics to support Gorbachev's purges. In 1990, Niazov was given the highest position possible for a Soviet Republic, chairman of the Supreme Soviet of the Turkmen SSR. However, something obviously changed for Niazov in the five years he was first secretary. He became increasingly distrustful of Gorbachev and his allies. During the late 1980s, as well as into the latter years of the Soviet Union's existence, Niazov quietly began purging Gorbachev allies that he had worked to put into power in Ashgabat himself. In August 1991, Niazov supported the coup against Gorbachev. Though the coup failed, Niazov wasted no time in separating Ashgabat from Moscow. Two months later, Turkmenistan, under Niazov, declared their independence from the Soviet Union. In June of 1992, less than a year later, Turkmenistan held its first elections. The ballot only included one name, Sapr Murat Niazov. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm happy to finally be back making videos, and you can expect to see videos more often from me. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one, including a part two I plan to make on the actual presidency of Niazov. Nonetheless, like always, have a great day.